second half. But the people found their solution and they understood that if you're together, if we all take the risk, then we share it and we are strong together. And, and so they organized and if anyone was attacked, the reaction was exactly the opposite. They, would, they even gave uh, people who are vulnerable with a, a sound horn, you know, that you press, it's like a spray, but when you press, it makes a sound. Yeah. And you can go around and you have it around your neck. If you're attacked, you make some noise. Immediately, everybody shows up. People go out in the street. Uh, if they're on the 15th floor, they open the door and they shout and they make noise. If you're in a car, you stop your car, block the traffic, go out and, 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 and be present to each other. It became the safest neighbor, neighborhood in the entire United States. Now that showed me the power of nonviolence that can be done either by indigenous people, you know, who have nothing in one place and can start living a good life and uh, ordinary people of all kinds uh, can uh, also show solidarity. I was born of deaf parents. So I know what it is to uh, suffer some disability and, 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 uh, and the difficulties of life. But my parents were very generous. And, and um, even when they had nothing left, they shared what they have with the others. So they taught me uh, the importance of uh, being present for the others, preparing my PhD. And whether in the private sector or at the university, they were presenting the uh, research work that I was doing to the military in order to get funding because uh, the military has the wisdom to fund a hundred projects in order to find the two or three that they can use. And, you know, I, I thought about that and I, I said, I haven't come to this world to help kill better, more precisely, more massively. You know, I, what I, I felt, you know, my, uh, purpose in life could be was to help reunite the human family, which is too much uh, in pieces separated. And I decided to resist. So I refused. And refusing means that uh, I had to quit the two jobs. I had to quit. So I went to work for the International Fellowship of Reconciliation, which is a peace movement that was built during World War II. I could also apply for a status of conscientious objector because there is that legal possibility in France where I was born and, and, and uh, where they would call me into the army. But that civil service existed only as an alternative to the military service or military draft. Mm -hmm. So it, it didn't exist per se. I was ready to do civil service to society, but not as an alternative so that they could keep drafting other people into the army. They make you an exception to the rule in order to maintain the rule. You cannot just be a witness and, and, and live according to your conscience. When you're confronted with something like that, you must use that to change something in society. Now, we haven't changed uh, everything, but at least if during the course of your life you can move things one millimeter in the right direction, one inch in the right direction, you know, it's already something that we've gained. It's always individuals who make the difference. That's why we each have to look at, each, at ourselves in the mirror, in the eyes, and say, what am I doing with my life? Some of us in the UN system said, 
Okay, but our uh, economy is not leading to that. So we took the initiative of putting, uh, shedding some light on social and solidarity economy, a different way of relating to each other, of producing and exchanging with each other, social and solidarity economy, the cooperatives, all these things, all, you know, all these things that put people over profits. There are many things that are happening in society where people are trying something different where solidarity expresses itself uh, in, in whatever way. So you have uh, all these initiatives of Friday for the Future. Mm -hmm. uh, children, school children go on strike and say, what, what did you do to us? Mm -hmm.